because me this just is interesting and i really want to carry my things out with me but i've already gone to fight ireland welcome back to my channel hi how are you guys how are we all doing you know how is everything how are you feeling at your own end i noticed that sometimes i don't even ask you guys like how you are what's happening with you welcome back again to my channel my name is bria i'm a lifestyle content creator living in ireland if this is your first time you're on the right channel like this is the right time for you to click here and if you're a returning subscriber mwah, thank you so much for tuning in all my heart and my love goes to you guys you're definitely definitely a real one so today guys we are going to be having the very first ever collaboration on Ria 6 i mean like a collaboration with a fellow youtuber so that's the um collaboration that we're going to be having today and her name is chilo her youtube channel name is chilo talks i'm going to leave it down on the screen and also leave it in my description box i hope i think that this is something that people will want to hear i feel like this is something people want to listen to people want to hear and i'm here for this kind of collaboration i'm leaving ireland and i'm going to japan because of all of these things that this young lady this beautiful talented intelligent young lady is going to be saying in this video so i have a couple of questions that i'm going to be asking her and then when i ask the question you're going to see her next on the screen and then she's going to answer it as best and fast as she can so that it will give knowledge and insight to people that are planning to move to japan either for school anything you want to know scholarship and all of this stuff so that's what we're going to be doing today it's more or less like a collaboration and as you can already see from the title it's going to be about living and studying in japan for free me as i'm hearing for free like this i'm packing my things island bye i'm going to japan i really hope you sit back and enjoy this video and ask all the questions that you can ask leave it down in the comment section you can also head over to her channel as well and also support her and subscribe to her channel she gives a lot a lot more of this um study videos traveling videos you know she's also a lifestyle content creator as well and also she's really focused on the education part anyway so you have more questions and you that you need answers to from japan she has also done collaborations with people that school in the united states people that school in the uk people from nigeria and i'm with her here on this one for ireland it's a very good collaboration thank you so much chilo talks welcome to ria sticks channel actually thank you for gracing us with your presence and um the first question that we have for you today on this channel is i want you to first of all introduce yourself and also talk about japan right talk about like the several opportunities of studying there opportunities that they have have if you study in japan as an international student hey guys man it feels so good to be on rias ria take screen today like i'm all the way in ireland <laughs> okay guys hey guys my name is chioma i kind of feel that already gives me away right so i'm obviously a nigerian currently living and studying in japan but chioma aka chilo talks here on youtube right so guys, I've been in Japan for two years now and I've been doing my postgraduate studies over here in Japan. Wait, one thing, one reaction I always get from people is how Japan? Why Japan? Where Japan? Nah, nah, nah. And I kind of understand that most times this is coming from a place of, you know, ignorance based on the fact that there is little or no information about the opportunities over here in Japan. So, I get it. I'm here to tell you today, guys, that eight out of ten nigerians or will i say eight out of ten africans over here in japan are on fully funded programs that's how amazing the opportunities are over here fully funded programs that range from masters phd teachers training program that's if you're a teacher and you want to come down to japan for an 18 month scholarship and so on and so forth so there's a lot of opportunities over here guys so because of that on my channel I vlog about my life as a foreign student in Japan. I vlog about life in Japan generally. I vlog about scholarships. And that's actually because I've realized that just like me previously, so many people don't even believe in this scholarship thing. Some people feel like you have to have long legs. You understand? Some people feel like, you know, it, it's the smartest people. It's definitely not the smartest people that get the scholarships. It just needs you to have the right information, be in the right place at the right time, do the right things. It's just 
just a, a strategic approach so guys this is me telling you that scholarships are very affordable how do you think the person should go about you know trying to study in japan is there a need for the use of an agent or not like talk to us about these things thank you very much for this question ria okay and the process is actually like i'm just going to give a very tentative process now if you're coming through scholarships some scholarships come automatic with the admission so basically that's scholarship and admission then um visa process right but if you're coming through some other scholarships some other scholarship process will definitely be scholarships first um the admission second and then the visa processness guys i have not seen anybody like maybe this is just the people i have met but i've definitely not seen anybody that used an agent this is something you can actually do by yourself from the comfort of your home with with anything you use to access the internet, literally, it could be your phone, it could be your laptop or anything. Now about language proficiency and all those things. Now you are aware, it's no news that Asia, even people who go to China will tell you this because I know China is... China, there's a lot of information about Chinese universities. But then in Japan, they would, they would definitely ask you for the um, proficiency. But you don't need to go and start taking English proficiency exams like TOEFL, IELTS, and all. If you have, you know, this, this certificate that shows that you were taught in English, and of course, most all Nigerian universities teach you in English. I graduated from University of Nigeria, UNN, and while applying for my transcript, there was an opportunity for me to also apply for the English certificate. That's the certificate that actually shows that I was taught in English. So in the place where they ask you for the certificates most times i just say others and then i insert that certificate now that's for majority of the school but i am also aware that schools like university of tokyo because tokyo is very internationalized you know that tokyo is the capital of japan and there are lots of foreigners and i even had uh, lots of foreign um, professors there so most times i heard tokyo will ask you for the main um, english proficiency so you have to take the exam but then again someone i know said they cut off is not going to be unrealistic because Asia's first language, Japan's first language obviously is not English, right? So it's not like you need to go and worry about taking some unrealistic exams and all those things. Now let's talk about um, coming to Japan. I always advise people to use the scholarship routes. It's very seamless guys and I'm hopeful that in this video, towards the middle of this video, we'll still talk about scholarships, how to apply and the website that you're going to use that will be very helpful for you there are various scholarships um and the major one that people always talk about is the government funded scholarship guys you know anything that government is funding you're fully backed like it's like say you're a government begins like being an nysc person right and um the government scholarship is actually from different categories university recommended embassy recommended and so on and so forth guys now i will always say use the scholarship routes because the scholarship route comes with a map they give you a map a map that is well detailed down to your arrival in japan so it also helps cut off the process of needing an agent it also helps cut off the process of trying to crack your head of what next what am i to do but if you're assuming you want to come here for by funding yourself by yourself i would advise you go to the university's website that's if you have a particular university in mind if you don't just simply use google and google the universities that you think you'll be interested in that are doing your courses and then i think what i would advise is when you go to your graduate school that's if you're a graduate student let us in your graduate you're a science student go to graduate school of science and find your info as in their the, the decks for international students those people are very very prompt in replying people send them an email or you look at the procedures the application guidelines and you take it up from there literally the, the truth is we're all human beings and more or less we will still end up making mistakes i feel like common mistakes that you can make as an individual that are inevitable just take us through common mistakes that you made or common mistakes that people make while trying to apply to study in japan so that anybody watching this will try to you know avoid these mistakes and not make them this question is very 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 important because this is a mistake that i almost made too now a very common mistake people make is in the email 
now one major thing you will definitely do when you're coming or you're considering japanese you will you will get to a point where you have to send an email to a prospective supervisor that you want the person to supervise you right now majority of people send that first email and because i always advise people that as much as possible most times people may not give you a positive reply before maybe your scholarship deadline and maybe the scholarship tells you it's okay but it doesn't reduce your chances but i always advise people to try and get a supervisor but let's assume now that you sent an email and you did not get any reply by any reply i mean both positive or negative even negative is a reply you get me now most people just you know take it as a no but most times it's not a no it's actually not a no guys i'm just a graduate student and my emails could get overwhelming my mailbox <laughs> could get overwhelming most times so i can imagine what these professors their email look like especially around the period where scholarships are starting so most of them they either skip your email by oversight or you know when somebody sees an email and it's like okay i'll reply later or something sometimes it's not because the person doesn't want to work with you so the thing i always advise people is send a reminder mail if you wait for like one week or two weeks and the professor has not yet sent you a reply copy the first email i say copy because you don't also want to give the person assignment of going to look for your first email so you copy the first email and send a polite but yet subtle reminder i'm emphasizing polite because it's very easy for a reminder mail to sound very rude guys the reason why i said i almost made this mistake was i literally left it like nobody wants to reply me right but the minute i sent my professor and as in the reminder mail he was like oh i'm sorry i wanted to reply okay yeah yeah and all that so reminder mails really work for professors and then let's talk about like scholarships which is really important i'm sure lots of people want to know if there are scholarships because i mean living and studying in japan for free it's not just by the title you know it has to come along with what japan has to offer you know for international students especially so take us through scholarships and tuition waivers um tuition fee waivers and ways of like easing financial burden of schooling them take us through these things because i know lots of people want to know yes we finally get to this scholarship point then there is no like this there's this video will be complete without talking about scholarships now the major scholarship i want to talk about is the next japan scholarship the max japan scholarship that's the ministry of education scholarship is actually the government funded scholarship and it's fully funded by fully funded guys i mean they take care of your tuition fee they give you monthly stipend they fly you down to japan take care of so many things that this video may not be able to cover now this scholarship is actually two major categories they have the embassy recommended category and the university recommended category as the name implies embassy recommended the embassy does the recruitment university does the recruitment for the university recommended scholarship but i know that the embassy recommended scholarship is actually very common the embassy recommended is common and that's because most african countries are under the diplomatic ties and so they are eligible for it and guys this scholarship is very 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 easy to get why do i say it's easy to get when once the call for application is there you send in your document and when you send in your documents, the screening process happens. If you're shortlisted, you come in for an exam. I think after the exam, you come in for an interview. After the interview, you're giving you a scholarship letter. That's for the embassy. But guys, there is still university recommended scholarship. It doesn't end at embassy. And this one's open different times from the embassy. What I always advise people is go to the university's website and look for their next category there different universities have different patterns they want to go with this category some people want exam they want you to write if you're from chemistry they want you to write chemistry exam if you're for physics they want to write physics exam. so that's why there is really no one size fits all formula for the university recommended scholarship now for the embassy recommended scholarship we also have an application guideline that explains everything when once the call for application begins now under the embassy recommended scholarship also where you have the teachers training the masters the phd and all that so guys one major trick one major advice i would say is head over to the official website of the embassy of japan in nigeria now and go and read a lot of things on past scholarships and the opening for the next scholarships that's the greatest tip i can give you right now embassy of japan in nigeria's official website that's if you're in nigeria and then after you know you're able to do all of these things that you have said that we can do you know in order to be able to get um 
admission and also be able to come over to Japan to start our schooling how is the visa process like let us know like the duration how long you have to wait the documents that you need to submit that are very necessary to submit and tell us about Japan in generally how is living in Japan like how are the people in Japan how is the education system like right how is it in Japan I know you've done your masters there and then you're also doing your PhD at the moment so take us through this whole process how is it like getting a job because some people are not really so keen about having to go to a particular country to what's what to school they are more about the prospects after schooling what do i have to to gain from this particular place after schooling do you understand like do i just come here to school and then leave for free and then there are no job prospects in my particular course or in this particular country so just take us through all of this process so that we'll be really really aware because me this just is interesting and i really want to carry my things and we'll be in fact I've already gone. Bye to Ireland. Thank you, Ria, for this question. I say thank you because so many people skip the fact that getting scholarship to a country or getting admission to a country is one thing and then getting visa is another thing. This is funny because people feel like it covers everything. It doesn't. People have been declined visa even with scholarships for different countries. I was talking to someone recently who is in another country. I can't remember the country now. And he was explaining this the visa process and I was I could not relate. That's the truth. The truth is when once you get the max scholarship, like I said, everything is seamless. You will get to a point where you'll be thinking that ah, why are these people as in, is this thing true? It's too good to be true. This is because when once your certificate comes to you, they book the appointment. Yes for you at the embassy they already tell them you're coming they will tell you the things you should carry with you they like when you get to the embassy it's like they're expecting you're not paying anything I, I can't remember paying any money at the embassy because it feels like the government actually covers for that the scholarship covers for the visa too so it's seamless when the visa is out they send you an email that it's ready if you want to pick it up immediately good and fine if you don't you can pick it up during the send forth party that's the part that is funny there is actually a send forth party for you if you are like if you are picked in the send forth party you get to meet the ambassador of japan in nigeria you get to meet alumni some of them are already professors in different universities in nigeria some are back some are not i knew I, I remember someone who flew from australia to come for that send forth party you get to meet dignitaries and then you start your life and come in the party too they get to connect you to lots of nigerians or africans that are already in the school you are going to so from the minute you get the scholarship these guys will cover you about living in japan one thing i will say is the japanese people the average japanese person is too polite like i know it doesn't make sense but they are very polite and the atmosphere here is very peaceful like very very peaceful i don't really see anybody coming here i think your problem will even be that it's quiet and it's they are too polite you understand so i don't really see anybody coming here and having an issue with living with the average japanese person okay guys i hope this video really helps you and i have I know we're trying to keep it very short i have loads of content on scholarships the process one step by step on my channel feel free to check my content and if you love what you see don't forget to join the gang in the other room that's chilo talks other room guys like i will always imply spread your eggs spread your eggs i understand that there's a lot of information going on around europe around america around so many places guys and it's okay and understandable even in asia there's information going on around um china but very few information about japan so this is me saying that spread your eggs you know you never can tell where it works for you and i'll be looking forward to welcoming you over here in japan see you next time if you come to the gang on chilo talks or see you next time in my next video rather bye for now so actually guys thank you so much for watching thank you so much chilo talks for doing this collaboration with me thank you for reaching out to me i hope you guys were able to gain a few things if you have more questions you can head over to our channel and leave it down in the comment section and trust me she's going to be looking through every comment and replying to everyone so thank you so much Lotox. talks thank you so much guys for watching i hope you're able to convince you why you should pack your things and leave and go to japan you know because i mean look at all the beautiful things that she has said but it's not sweet to your body don't you feel like running over now to japan Thank you so much guys for watching. Thank you so much. Chilo Talks. My name is Bria and I love you guys. See you guys in my next video. Bye. Mwah.